All right. I want everyone to just take a moment. Um, take a moment and look down at your feet. And I want you to picture what's below your feet and below that and below that and below that. And please stop before you come out on the other side of the world. What did you see? Dirt, roots, rocks, lava? Did anyone see a nematode? <laughs> this horrifyingly adorable creature <laughs> plays a great part in the reason we are all alive right now. And I bet that most of you didn't know it existed and have been walking all over it your entire lives. This creature has friends, lots of friends, like rotipers and bacteria, fungi, protozoa, microarthropods, everyone's favorite, the tardigrade, and me. My name is Chrissy, and I am a biological soil scientist. These guys are my very best friends, and together we spend a whole lot of time with a microscope trying to figure out how exactly to save the world. These creatures, along with a cast of other unseen microscopic organisms, make up the soil food web, which is actually critical to our daily survival. The soil food web is responsible for maintaining soil structure, preventing erosion, controlling pests and diseases, retaining water in our soils, sequestering carbon to clean our air, and perhaps most importantly, providing nutrients to our plants, which in turn provide nutrients to us. There is a common misconception that we need to be adding nutrients to our soil in order for our plants to grow. But what if I were to tell you that that's not really the whole story? You see, the very nature of soil is that it's made up of mineral particles. Phosphorus, calcium, potassium, magnesium, you name it, it's already in the soil. The issue is that these nutrients are not actually plant available without the help of our microscopic friends. So what we're talking about here isn't really a lack of nutrient situation as much as it's a lack of life situation. Let me explain. Please. Put on your imaginations, we are diving into the soil together. Picture yourself a plant. You can be whatever kind of plant you choose. You're vibing in the gentle breeze, dancing in the rain, and soaking in the sunshine like it's your job. Because it turns out, it is. With your plentiful access to sunshine and carbon dioxide, you make sugar like a champ. And you are so good at making sugar that you decide you're going to share some with your microscopic besties through your root system. So there you are, dishing up the all-you-can-eat sugar buffet, when who should be first to the party but your friends, fungi, and bacteria. They are so stoked on the sugar stash that you provided that they offer to do you a favor. And they're like, yo, plant, we'll go get you all those nutrients you needed. And you're like, yeah, great deal. So off they go. They're breaking down mineral particles with their enzymatic magic. They're converting calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, lime, all the good stuff that you crave. But what's this? They went ahead and got all those nutrients, but they don't even know how to cook them up in a plant available form that you can eat. Rude. Suddenly, a knock. Your good pals, nematode and protozoa, have arrived at the root zone. The gang's all here. You better go make some more drinks. But you turn your back for one second, and the root rave becomes a turf war. Nematode and protozoa devour fungi and bacteria. They're gone. Not a trace remains. You're standing there in stunned silence trying to figure out how you're going to communicate that eating other party guests is generally brown pawn. But before you can get a word out edgewise, nematode and protozoa push your friends straight through their digestive tract and drop a big old number two bomb right in the middle of the dance floor. <laughs> wow. Who invited this hot mess to the root zone? That's right. You did because that poop 
is now packed with all of the plant available nutrients that you need to grow big and strong. Behold, the power of poop. <laughs> Don't be worried about being a poop eater. It's like a totally natural process. All right, this concludes my poop jokes for this presentation. Uh, you can now be a human again if you want, up to you. So how can we be so sure of this microscopic magic? Well, this is a soil sample from an old growth forest. It survives all on its own without any human intervention. This is a soil sample from a typical American backyard. It survives off of fertilizers, hopes, and prayers. <laughs> it actually doesn't really take a soil scientist to see the difference between these two, right? One of these samples is hosting the party, and the other isn't. So, if soil microorganisms occur naturally, then why are there none in your backyard? Well, to put it simply, human impact. Construction, tilling, heavy machinery, concrete jungles. It turns out we are the real party poopers in this situation. In the 1930s, our country was reveling in the joys of the dust bowl. Due to poor land management practices such as heavy tilling, deep plowing, and a relentless conversion of native grasslands to wheat fields, our topsoil across the country was largely depleted. Along with that topsoil, massive populations of soil microorganisms disappear. Without those soil microorganisms to sustain our soil ecology, our crops died, our soil succumbed to drought, and the resulting erosion couldn't stand up to the high winds. Enter the Green Revolution. In response to the famine that resulted from the Dust Bowl, agronomists began to develop additive nutrients for our farms. Nitrate, urea, potash, pesticides, herbicides, all available to spread on your soil and restart your crops like magic. And did they work? Yeah, they did. They provided plants with the nutrients that they needed to grow. But at what cost? In addition to causing cancer, which we can talk about some other time, these largely chemical-based fertilizers also destroyed most remaining microorganisms in our soil. Not only is this devastating from an ecological perspective, but it has also created an absolute dependence on these additive amendments for the average American farmer. Without soil microorganisms to take care of our crops as they should, amendments are now the only way to grow. This works out great for the big ag amendment companies because they can continue to line their pockets at the cost of the American farmer, who is actually just trying to put food on American tables. But that's another tech talk. Now, for the question I know you've all been waiting for, are we doomed? In 2022, the UN reported that 90% of our topsoil was at risk by 2050 if we did not change our ways. 95% of the food that we eat is relying on topsoil. We started off this talk introducing you to a nightmare below your feet that you maybe didn't know existed. But I hope that you can now see that a life without soil microorganisms is actually the much bigger nightmare. But don't worry, it's a TED talk, there's hope. <laughs> The great news is that soil scientists all around the globe have been working on incredible solutions to restore our soil microorganisms. We have proven amazing results. We've restored ecosystems, increasing crop yields. We're watching livestock flourish. We're even figuring out how to reduce input costs for farmers so that they can break free from the chemical amendment cycle and start to see their margins come back. It's actually really, really hopeful work and is a problem we're 100% capable of fixing if we choose to prioritize it. So what can you do to be a part of the soil revolution? Well, you can start in your own backyard. You can mulch, you can leave the leads, you can stop using chemical fertilizers, you can come find me later and I would love to tell you all about living compost and how we can start to re-inoculate native microorganisms into your lawns and gardens in as little as one season. Support farmers who are working on restoring your soil ecology. 
the agricultural world has a huge stake in this game. And we really need to support them while they support the soil. Because in the end, that's actually going to support us all. Prioritize soil health in every aspect of your community. We should be seeing healthy soil in city parks, public spaces, natural spaces. Not only does healthy soil help us mitigate climate disaster and clean our air, but it also provides a higher quality of life for everyone surrounding it. Live your life aware of all of the organisms in your orbit, even those that might be too small to see. We were all put here for a reason, and this world is such a magical place when we live in balance with each other and take care of each other. So maybe think of this as your important years as a little moment. <laughs> when you walk out of here today, I hope that you take just a second to remember that the world actually doesn't end at your feet. I hope that you take more than a second to think about how you can take care of the trillions of microscopic creatures that live below us, because taking care of them actually is taking care of yourself. But most importantly, when you close your eyes tonight, I hope you dream about a nematode. <laughs>